Can you actually use a Raspberry Pi as a desktop replacement? I actually tried this. I actually lived in a Raspberry Pi uh, as my home computer for about a month. So you guys know uh, a few months ago, I actually moved into a new office, my, my studio here that I typically record in. And I only had one home computer at the time, my workstation, my desktop tower. I moved it to this office, meaning I didn't have a home computer. I actually went without a home computer for a little over three months because uh, just prices of computer parts were outrageous. It was hard to find graphics cards. So I went three months without any home computer. And for the first two months of that, I just was fine with it. I just wanted to completely unplug while I was at home. I was experimenting with that idea. I actually haven't had a TV in years and then not having a computer. It was actually kind of nice, but then at the same time, sometimes I did need to actually do work at home. It would have been nice to at least have the option to occasionally <laughs> log into a computer and do, I don't know, show notes for the next day, you know, in preparation for videos and things like that. So after about two months, I decided to do an experiment. I've got Raspberry Pis. I've got some older Raspberry Pi 3s, and I also have a Raspberry Pi 4, which the Raspberry Pi 4 is a couple of years old at this point. It's not new, but when it came out, it was a major upgrade for Raspberry Pis and the fact that it had eight gigs of RAM. And with eight gigs of RAM, I thought, you know what? It might be able to serve as a proper desktop computer. So I experimented with the idea. I went ahead and installed Manjaro Raspberry Pi ARM edition on that thing and it it kind of worked. Certainly the Raspberry Pi 4 kind of worked. Uh, it's certainly better than the old Raspberry Pi 3. I actually have a, a Pi 3 and a Pi 4. Both of them, they look very similar. This is from Kit. It comes with the case. If I took the top off, you can actually see the board. Actually, the board is underneath, but you had a what is a heat, heat sink there. You also have a, a fan you can install if you want to. I actually did install the fan in the Pi 4. I've actually got the Pi 4 uh, plugged in over here. I'm going to show you a little bit of that in just a second. But all you need to do for those of you that are unfamiliar with these things, these things run off an SD card, right? And what you need to do is just flash an image to an SD card. And if you buy the Canna Kit uh, Pies, they actually come with a USB stick here. You actually can undo this and this little USB stick has a slot for a SD card to slide in there. So put the SD card in the USB stick and then put the USB stick in your computer and flash the image with something like Etcher on Linux or Rufus on Windows and you, what you do is you flash that that uh, image to the SD card, plug the SD card into your Raspberry Pi and then run through the installation of whatever Raspberry Pi Linux distribution you want. Obviously Manjaro is the one I'm using. Manjaro has a really nice ARM edition. Uh, Debian has ARM editions. Arch Linux has ARM editions. Actually the Canna kit, the, the SD cards that they come with are already flashed with a distribution called Noobs, which is based on Debian ARM. Now, years ago, with the Raspberry Pi Model 3, I actually did play around with the idea of could it be a desktop replacement. The problem with the Pi 3, it was a major upgrade from the Pi 1 and the Pi 2, but the Pi 3 still only came with one gig of RAM. One gig of RAM is tough, especially if you're going to do anything with a web browser. Web browsers are slow heavy, bloated. They, they require a ton of RAM. One gig of RAM is just not enough. And that was years ago for the Pi 3. The web and modern web browsers are so much more bloated than they were even five years ago. A Pi 3 would never work. And to be honest, the Pi 4 kind of doesn't work either. I ran into the issue with the Pi 4 when I launched something like Firefox or Cute Browser. It would take, I don't know, 30 seconds to a minute to, to open up. Not a huge problem. Again, it's not going to be great, but was it usable? Yeah, I can wait a minute for my web browser to, to open up the very first time. But how do web pages render? They're a little slow. They're not horribly slow. I mean, it's not to the point where it's just painful. It's okay. One thing you can't do, though, it's not going to play multimedia for you, at least not high definition. You're not going to watch high def videos on YouTube. You're not going to watch high definition videos on things like Netflix or Hulu or things like that. It's not going to handle anything 1080p or, or even higher. It's just forget about that. I wouldn't even do 720p. But if you're doing something like watching a YouTube video 480p, that's okay. That's doable. It's still not a great experience. But just surfing the web 
yeah, you'll be fine. Now, because the Pi 4 has 8 gigs of RAM, it, it is usable, but there's still one bottleneck we need to talk about, and that's the, the CPUs in these things. It's not a great CPU. So when you run an update, it takes forever. When you install software, it takes forever. And I actually installed uh, some software this morning on the Pi 4 in preparation for this video. I wanted to just update the system to make sure I had the latest and greatest packages installed. So the Pi 4... I got a new home computer about two weeks ago, so that Pi 4 hasn't been updated in at least two weeks because I unplugged it, right? So it's probably been two, maybe three weeks since the last Manjaro ARM update on that. So I ran through an update. It needed to update about 120, 130 packages, which typically on Arch Linux or Manjaro or Arco, any Arch-based system, you know, 120 packages, what do you think? Five minutes, probably less to do that update. It took me 45 minutes to do that update of 120 packages on that Raspberry Pi 4. That's not unusual either. That's how long it takes pretty much any time you do updates because the CPU is slow. It takes a while to, to build things and do things. It's, it's not a powerful machine by any means. Now let me switch over to my Raspberry Pi 4 desktop. I installed uh, Manjaro ARM with the XFCE desktop, but I installed Qtile and my Qtile configs on top of it because you guys know I like tiling window managers. Qtile was in Manjaro ARM's repositories. So here is Manjaro ARM, the XFCE edition. It is your standard XFCE desktop environment. I actually didn't do too much in XFCE because I quickly installed the uh, Qtile window manager inside this. So actually, let me log out and show you the desktop I actually lived in for about a month. So how do I log out here? I forget how to use XFCE sometimes. There's the log out button. So now that I'm in the login manager, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and choose Qtile instead of XFCE. And then let me go ahead and log in. So this is my Qtile desktop. This is the Qtile window manager. And the reason I went with Qtile instead of Xmonad is I don't think, I think I had some problems getting Xmonad or Xmonad Contrib or Xmobar, some of those Haskell stuff. Uh, I, it wasn't really packaged for the ARM edition of Manjaro, but Qtile was in the repositories and I quite like Qtile. Qtile is basically a, an exact clone of Xmonad almost, except written in Python. So since it was in the repositories, I installed Qtile. Then I went and grabbed my Qtile configs from my .files repository on my GitLab, and then I installed uh, the ST terminal because I have my own build of ST, and uh, I installed my shell color scripts program. You can see I get a random shell color script every time I open the ST terminal. So uh, all of that works, and of course the main thing I need for work as far as you know, any kind of show notes, any kind of scripting I do, typically I do everything in Emacs. So if I launch Emacs here, you see that it actually launches pretty quick. Now the Emacs daemon is running in the background, so this is an Emacs client, but you can see that actually launches rather quickly if I wanted to just edit something. I don't know, the bash RC just to open something here. You know, it takes a couple of seconds to, to open that, but it, it's fine. It's certainly usable. You do notice a little bit of input lag sometimes when you're typing blazing fast, you know, but again, the Raspberry Pi, the limitations, really, the CPU is kind of the limitation on the Pi, but it is certainly usable. I really have no complaints as far as working in the terminal and working in inside Emacs. Now, where some of my complaints really start would be, let me open up Firefox. Did I install Firefox? I think I installed both Firefox and Qt Browser. Let's see how long it takes for Firefox to load on the Raspberry Pi. And we're waiting. We're still waiting, and we're still waiting. All right, so <laughs> it uh, it finally launched there, which you know that actually isn't too bad. Again, as I like I said, if it takes sixty seconds to start Firefox, I mean you're only starting your browser typically one time. But let's go ahead and open something like my GitLab. Let's see how long this page takes to render. Because this is the annoying part. If pages typically take forever to load. Uh, on my regular computer, on my desktop, you know, this would have already loaded, but we're still waiting. We're still waiting. Uh, yeah, I would say, you know, it probably is going to take, yeah, here it comes. Yeah, that's probably five, six times slower to load a page than what it would be on my regular computer. Now, is that painful? 
It's annoying, but it's not painful. It's not painful if this is your only desktop computer. If you had to use the Raspberry Pi 4 as a desktop, again, it's perfectly usable. Again, rendering web pages is slow. For high definition video, just forget about it. We should talk about gaming. The Raspberry Pi 4 is perfect for gaming if you're doing retro gaming. I'm talking about old school, you know, 8-bit, 16-bit gaming from like the, the Atari days uh, or the, the original Nintendo or even the Super Nintendo, things like that. Because the Raspberry Pi 4, it's weak compared to modern computers, but compared to those old school consoles, the Raspberry Pi 4 is blazing fast. It'll play all those retro games just fine. Will it play anything modern as far as gaming? Absolutely not. You're not going to launch Steam. You're not going to get Call of Duty to work. It's just going to laugh at you. This is never going to happen. You're not just some of the free and open source games that that are out there. Super Tux, I'm sure, probably wouldn't work. Zero AD, forget about it. No chance, as, as demanding as that game is. So the Pi 4 would be fine for retro gaming, but anything, any game made in the last, I don't know, 15, 20 years, uh, I would just uh, completely ditch that idea. That's not going to work. So does the Raspberry Pi 4 serve as a suitable desktop replacement? Uh, kind of. It depends. Uh, it's very limited. You can actually do some basic computing. Uh, it certainly is better than not having a computer at all. Will you have some pain points? Will there be some frustrations? Sure. But again, it, it's... It, for an emergency situation like I had where, you know, I didn't have a computer for a couple of months, this thing actually did serve a real purpose and I was glad I had it. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Of course, I'm talking about Absy, Gabe, James, Mitchell, Paul, Scott, Wes, Akami, Allen, Chuck, Kurt, David, Dylan, Gregory, Heiko, Mike, Arian, Alexander, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Polytech, Raver, Red Prophet, Stephen, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode about using the Raspberry Pi 4 as a desktop replacement. This show wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well. All these names you're seeing on the screen. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because the DistroTube channel, I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to support me, look for DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. I'm so glad to have a real computer again. <laughs>